Mi nombre es Rosalinda Guillén y vengo de los Estados Unidos y quiero dejarles un mensaje aquí en este Expo del Pueblo y voy a hablar en español y luego en inglés. So, soy mexicana americana de, del pueblo, yo creo, más capitalista que hay en el mundo este día. I understand that from the United States, which is where I'm from, I'm a Mexican American, a farm worker for generations in the United States, from the state of Texas, that was Mexico before it was Texas. And as a family of Mexican people in the United States, we recognize the conquest that happened to our people. And the fact that after the Texas and California and other states were taken from Mexico, we became the new slave force for the agricultural industry in the United States. So my message today is that food sovereignty cannot be owned. Even though the United States is a country of conquest, and we as a people have been conquered in our own, on our own lands, and in a way we still are working in slavery in the agricultural industry that has become incredibly rich and powerful in the United States, and that power and that profit has spread from our country to many of the countries that are represented here today in the, in the People's Expo. I bring a message of solidarity from farm workers. And I bring also a message to let you know that the farm workers in the United States are now landless people. Where we once owned our own farms and our own lands in the Southwest, we are landless migrant workers that move inside the United States to harvest the crops that may, has made the agricultural industry rich for generations. I am one of those generations that has grown in poverty And I have come to understand that this poverty that my family grew up in was not just a coincidence or a failure of my own family, but it was constructed by the agricultural industry to have an endless supply of cheap labor. And when that cheap labor in the United States was no longer possible, they brought us in from Mexico, from my own native country. My people have been brought in as guest workers and as hired labor, again, cheap, with no rights and with incredible exploitation in the lands of the United States. So while we are a slave force, and my brothers and sisters in the African American community who liberated themselves up to a certain point from slavehood understand that we are the new slave force of the agricultural industry in a country that was founded by slave labor beginning in the cotton fields of the South. So I stand here in solidarity telling you that we as farm workers in the United States are fighting back and have been fighting back for generations. Our fight never ended. It was invisible and silent for many generations. And so no longer the solidarity of the Mexican people and the Mexican campesinos and the farm workers is going across borders. And my message today, food sovereignty cannot be owned, is because we understand as farm workers what food sovereignty is. We understand that our lives, our culture, our language, and our history is tied to the land. As farm workers in the United States, we saw from the very beginning the decadence of the agricultural industry. We witnessed the beginning of the destruction of the land in the United States. We spoke out. Cesar Chavez and the founding of the United Farm Workers said in 1989 in my own state of Washington, he said, the farm workers in the United States are like the canaries in the mines. And as the president of the only farm worker union in the United States, I come to tell you that something is terribly wrong in the production of the food in this country. That the land is being killed and worse yet, my people are dying with it. As farm workers, we die of cancer at a higher average than the, everybody else in the country. The average lifespan of a farm worker, which are all Mexican Americans in the United States, is 49 years compared to 78. That is a fact. It's a reality that we face all the time. The reality that we grow up in poverty and that now that we as the Texans and the Southwesterners are no longer the field workers, we have still the history and the sense and understanding that we are still part of the land. It is now new people 
from the deeper part of Mexico that are harvesting the crops and working the lands of the United States, continuing to make the industry rich. The people from Oaxaca, the Mixtecos, and the Triquis, an indigenous workforce that we are standing in solidarity. I am the founder of an organization in the Northwest that is fighting with farm workers for the right to be human, if you can believe that. That we, as farm workers in the US, are saying we are not machines. We are not animals. We have the right to live as human beings and to have a life and hope for a future that we may live beyond 49 years old. In the United States, the farm workers have, are living with and earning slave wages that has been institutionalized and legalized in the peace rate wage process. That we don't have the right to organize a union in the United States except in California because of Cesar Chavez's fight to build the union. But in spite of this, food sovereignty cannot be owned. In spite of this, farm workers in the state of Washington have formed their own independent union. Familias Unidas por la Justicia has formed in the year 2013. On July 11th, over 400 farm workers went on strike. My organization, which was created to build the political environment and to build the support base for farm workers that wish to organize and fight back. It is happening in the state of Washington, and the movement is growing south into California, and now into San Quintin in Baja California, in Mexico. So my message today is this. It's very clear. I wanted the microphone to let you know that for us, the farm workers from Mexico in the United States, we will not sell our food sovereignty, our right to be human, and to continue to work the land with dignity and respect and safety and health in the future. We are here, and I come to bring you the message that the only way that food sovereignty may not be bought is for us and for all consumers to not buy the products of exploitative corporations that are damaging people and people's spirits all over the world. We are boycotting the products, the berry products from a large agri-corporation in the United States called Driscoll. Because Driscoll is the main purchaser of the berries in the farm in Skagit County called Sakuma Brothers Berry Farms. And we are asking Driscoll to stop buying those berries because that is only one farm out of 700 that they are buying berries from in Mexico and the United States. And they are very well aware that each one of those farms is using Mexican farm workers as slave labor with the barest amount of wages being earned so that we can barely survive. Boycott Driscoll is my message. Food sovereignty means that as leaders in the food sovereignty movement, we have to fight capitalism back where it hurts the most. If there is a product being produced where people are being exploited, we must not buy it. We must not cooperate. We must not be part of that chain of capitalism that is exploiting workers. And so we stand together, and we must continue to stand together like the corporate expo that's taking place now. If those products in the big, shiny building that is being put together and all those corporations out there, our message should be to our brothers and sisters to not buy the products that they are producing to stop cooperating with these corporations because people's lives are being hurt. And so you can say all the statistics, you can show all the charts, you can tell the truth. But the fact is that until the workers themselves stand up and say, this is what is happening to us today, we will not be believed. And so we come, and I'm grateful for the invitation to come to address you today and to be part of this expo, the People's Expo, to bring the message from the United States, that from the belly of the beast, where capitalism reigns and is leaving to go into your countries, we are fighting back. And we are standing together, and we will continue to stand together. And I thank you for your solidarity, and I ask you that if you see the label Driscoll and the berries in Europe or anywhere, to not buy it and to take the message and go to the website boycottsakumaberries.com and learn about this boycott 
and know what kind of actions you can take so that hopefully the farm workers in, in Skagit County in Washington State will have a union contract and things will begin to change. Thank you.